Hey, what's up guys? It's Kyle from RR Buildings and I got a short little video for you guys and it has to do with metal roofing. Now, I know a lot of times you see us put on a standard, you know, basically ribbed profile metal and there's no insulation, vapor barrier, nothing up there on the roof structure. And that is because we typically rely on the, um, the ventilation and being properly, well, properly ventilated up in the attic space. So we want that good airflow through the soffits on the eaves and then we want it to go up and come out of our ridge vent and that's going to keep the attic space which is the unconditioned basically neutral air in the building that we want to be as close to the outside as possible now i'm going to show you a product that is i don't know how old i don't know how long it's been on the market we've used it a few times but uh, this building behind me here that we're building, it's not gonna be a build series, uh, but I'm actually building it for some friends and I'm using a different builder's package. So this is a Walters building building. And uh, they're out of Wisconsin, so if you're in the Wisconsin area, you can go ahead and look them up. Uh, they put out a pretty good product. And uh, what I like is they got on this panel specifically what is called a drip stop. Now, typically on a roof structure like this, um, if somebody's looking for some sort of a condensation barrier, they're gonna use a lot of times like what I call a bag and sag, where it's like a really thin insulation roll and it rolls underneath of the uh, steel over top the purlins and you do that as you're installing the metal. Man, it is a pain in the butt, it can't be windy, it takes a lot of work. And uh, one of the other solutions is to put like a fan fold or some sort of a rigid four by eight sheet up underneath the panel before you install it. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, I care about labor, efficiency, getting done on a timely matter, and having a good product. So what I'm gonna show you guys is something that really encompasses all those things, and it does it without having to add an additional step to the process of installing the roof. So what we got here is a good example, and I, I'm assuming what happened here is this is actually some roof material for the porch, and they didn't uh, put the drip stop on the porch roof it's only on the main structure and that's probably because it's going to be a conditioned space and obviously the porch is just outside so we're not too much worried about differences in temperature but as you can see here if i get really close it's basically like a woven a woven uh fibery i compare it to like a felt and this is glued and applied at the factory so as the sheet is ran through the mill this is put on before it even hits the rib profile machine and um, you can see here i'll go ahead and pull it up it's pretty darn sticky as you can see and like i said i don't know how to compare it to anything other than it's actually like a very felty material now i'm told i've talked to these guys the people that make the drip stop and they actually also make the inside liner of a lot of wheel wells. So I have a GMC, you guys maybe have seen my truck, and the wheel wells are lined with the same material and it's used as a sound deadening um, material inside the wheel well. So when rocks are hitting or whatever debris off your tires, it doesn't make as much of a ting noise. I mean, here's a little rock. You can hear the difference. So that's just a small example. So here's a shot of the felt here on the underside of the roof. So you can see we're here on the underside and this is where you wanna burn it off. So you're not gonna sit here and like put a lot of heat to it, but just a flash burn. And I'll show that here as we do it, but all you're gonna do is it's just gonna kinda singe it. That way it's not gonna hold the moisture and suck up into the roof system. It just, you know, this will just be like basically bare metal and then here and then here on the underside this is what's going to hold that water a lot of times right here you'll always go into an old building and you'll see all the water trails where condensation has ran for years and years down the lumber deteriorating it this is going to keep it all in the panel uh, some of you might be saying well yeah but what about the top side of the two by won't that just rot that out um, I honestly don't have an answer for that because I've wondered the same thing But when you go look at a building with this material, you don't see any water at all Which tells me it's doing its job. So um, I'm not the one that developed it We're just out here in the field using this stuff and you know learning from our experiences So definitely I would love to hear some thoughts if 
people have them down below we'll have that discussion in the comments and uh, see what you guys think So you can see by doing the burn, it basically hardens the felt and it's not soft. It's not going to suck up any water. And so that's the point to uh, make sure you torch the overhang of your steel so you're not getting a water condensation wicking back up into your panel. want to make sure you're nice and quick you don't want to hold the heat too long damage any of the steel finish or ladybugs I'll probably go ahead and link um, the product down below in the description. So if you guys are interested, check it out. But I, if I remember correctly, this material will hold somewhere along the neighborhood of a cup, a cup of water uh, to every square foot. So what that equates to is a lot of water in my eyes. And so what happens is the way this product works is let's say on a, a nice chilly morning, right? You got that cold space up in your attic and the sun comes out and it hits the steel. Well, what happens is you get that condensation. You've already got the frozen ice underneath of your uh, steel just from overnight. And then um, it starts to melt and then that's why you get that drip in a lot of post frame buildings. Now, most of the time that's because it's improperly ventilated and there's nowhere for that moisture to go. It doesn't have a ridge cap. It doesn't have soft vents. Um, and so that's a big culprit. But what this product does is it, it holds onto that moisture. When the sun comes out, it's, it melts it maybe, but it doesn't go anywhere. It stays right there. And then as the day goes on, the air just, it dissipates into the air, the humidity, whatever. And um, you don't get all those streaks down your purlins. You don't get that drip. Uh, and it just naturally just dissipates. So it's really a cool product. But most importantly, it saves a ton of time, a ton of labor, and I think it adds about a, a dollar every linear foot of steel. Um, and I've, I've ran those numbers many times, and it always makes sense to use this product versus buying the insulation material and then the labor that it takes to put it on the roof while you're applying your steel. This is a one-shot deal. You put it up, you're done. The only thing that you gotta make, make sure of is that once you're done and your roof is on, you've got to take a torch and you got to burn up the overhang outside on the eave because you don't want that that water from the outside maybe on a rain you don't want that moisture wicking back up into your roof structure you only want that condensation moisture attaching itself to the drip stop so i don't know if this was helpful hopefully a lot of you that are maybe watching this maybe thinking about condensation in your buildings and what alternatives there are um, especially if you're doing it kind of diy and you don't really have the extra labor you don't have the machinery um, go ahead and have your metal supplier put drip stop on the steel for your roof and uh, that's going to save you a lot of time a lot of effort and you'll thank me most likely uh, so i don't know go ahead and uh, drop down in the comments if you guys have used this what your thoughts are if you've had any problems because i don't use it every job but there's some jobs that we do have to use it like a, a seed dealership or uh, maybe something that's going to have some sensitive uh, materials being stored in it typically if we're doing a shop with insulation and vapor barrier i don't worry about it because we're not getting that in, uh, moisture up into that unconditioned space but it's a great idea if you're doing a building um, that's just open and you don't want any potential drips but remember always do a nice overhang and you will reduce the chances of condensation so thanks a lot for uh for checking out this video i know it was a quick one it was just more of a little like tip and tutorial kind of a an educational like hey make sure you guys understand that this product is out there and um i've used it a couple times it's quite nice so we'll catch you guys on another video thanks for uh Tuning in. Later.